welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. <clears throat> this is Webster Tarpley reporting to you from Washington, D.C. We're recording on the afternoon of uh, Friday, the 25th of September. Now, we've just had another coup d'etat here in Washington, D.C. We have them all the time. We had one by uh, the late unlamented Allen uh, at the end of July, and now we got another one. It's the fall of John Boehner, the famous weeper. You saw him weeping uh, behind the Pope. Uh, an old reactionary has now been forced out by a group of fascist young Turks, that is to say the Freedom Caucus. Um, so that's the end of Boehner. And the question is now, will that be enough for those young Turks in the uh, Freedom Caucus, so to speak? Uh, or will they demand more? Will they insist on shutting down the United States government and maybe bankrupting the United States? Just the kind of people we need to put into government. Absolute lunatics, people who ought to be uh, put into straitjackets for their own good. And nevertheless, they have the voice in running the country. And I turn to the Democrats and say, how could you have allowed this to happen? I was doing that last weekend at a local uh, Democratic Party picnic, trying to get some sense out of Congressman uh, Delaney here in the Maryland suburbs, and also a guy by the name of Raskin, who is running to replace him. And I guess that's the family associated with the uh, Institute for Policy Studies. So uh, all of these issues uh, are crowding ahead. We want to talk, first of all, about the fall of Allen. But even before we do that, let's talk about action, because we're the tax Wall Street Party. We do things. We don't just complain. Ask Allen if we can do things. We actually do uh, have an effect on world affairs. Now, here's uh, what we've got. Uh, of all the people coming to town, right, you've got President Xi of China, you've got the Pope, uh, you've got now Russian President Putin. So we're proposing the following. I'm proposing this to you. This coming Sunday, and let's get the date uh, on that. It's going to be Sunday, the 27th of September. Sunday, the 27th of September at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern Daylight Time, we are attempting to promote a demonstration to welcome Russian President Putin to the United States. This will be held once again, 2 p.m. Sunday, Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza. It's that park. Uh, 2 p.m. Sunday, New York City, right over by the United Nations. It's going to be on, uh, the park is actually on East 47th Street, East 47th Street, between 1st Avenue and 2nd Avenue. Now, let me give you the full picture. First of all, I will be there. You want to meet me? Come, I'll be there. We can talk a lot because we may have to uh, wait around for a while. Uh, in terms of uh, permits, we are attempting to get a sound permit from the distinguished uh, New York City Police Department. So we're hoping that uh, they will respond favorably. That would have to be forthcoming probably uh, tonight. And again, tonight means the, the evening, uh, the close of business on Friday the 25th. Although the permit comes out of a police station and therefore might be issued, according to insiders, uh, just, just about any time. That's a sound permit. Uh, that's only for sound. In other words, they have this uh, crazy setup in New York where you cannot have amplification equipment. You can't have your bullhorn or your other amplification stuff. So that's what we're trying to get a permit for. But quite independent of that, it looks like we have every reason – to be able to go to Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza with a big banner that's going to say, Welcome Putin, the peacemaker, the rather small. And it will be the Tax Wall Street Party and the United Front Against Austerity. Uh, we do this, of course, because other people are going to obviously have um, people out to welcome them. 
In particular, His Holiness the Pope gets a big crowd uh, just about automatically everywhere he goes. But we also have a point of view, which is that the U.S.-Russian relationship is the most important single one in the world. We must have good, friendly, cooperative relations with the Russian Federation. This is an imperative of U.S. national interest. And anyone who doesn't see that is a fool who should be ejected from government, the State Department, uh, or whatever other bureaucracy it is, the White House in particular. The U.S.-Russian relationship is at the heart of everything. If you have this functioning on a harmonious basis, the United States can bring along the British and the French, Russia can bring along China, and you can get something done. Do what? Well, of course, we're interested in stopping the civil war in Syria. We don't want the destabilization of Syria. As you know, based on my trip there in November 2011, I am uh, absolutely convinced and said so at the time on Russia Today that this Syrian civil war is the work of foreign death squads, foreign fighters brought in from Libya and other places. Uh, if we have the cooperation of the great powers, starting with the United States and Russia, we can solve this. It is quite evident that President Putin wants to solve it. He does not want to have to deal with Islamist crazies uh, in Ukraine uh, or in, in, with the cooperation of Ukraine operating, let's say, in Crimea, in that, uh, of course, Russian territory, been Russian for lo these many centuries, uh, not time to, uh, to tamper or meddle uh, with that. So Putin and the Kremlin are interested in solving this question of ISIS. They want to destroy ISIS. They want to do what the United States government claims it also wants to do. So therefore, welcome to Putin, the peacemaker. Welcome Putin, the peacemaker, thanks to Tax Wall Street Party and United Front Against Austerity. So please join me. I'll be there. Come on down. It's going to be uh, we'll check the weather forecast sometime during the show, but uh, it's that wonderful time of, uh, of uh, early autumn. Uh, Manhattan is at its best. This is the time to come. If you can get yourself there, uh, do it. Once again, Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza on uh, 40, uh, East 47th Street, and it's uh, between 1st Avenue and 2nd Avenue. It's right within sight of the United Nations Secretariat building. It's a little bit north of some of the other uh, UN entrances, but there it is. 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 27th of September, and we'll have a very nice time. I'm sure we'll be able to uh, to do all kinds of discussions and, uh, and other things. So uh, there it is. Uh, I'll, uh, you should also watch Webster G. Tarpley Twitter feed, Webster G. Tarpley Twitter feed, and we can give you some more information and some more um, instructions about how to get there, whatever. Um, you obviously want to bring some good signs. Uh, uh, we could say, uh, you know, stop ISIS, down with ISIS. Uh, U.S. and Russia can smash ISIS in short order. I'm sure we can. Welcome, Putin. Uh, thanks for saving us from a general war two, two years ago. And, of course, if you're a regular listener, you have a wealth of uh, material. Maybe I'll, I'll put out some, uh, some uh, alternative um, signs. So we'll be back in just a minute here on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So uh, the world historical individuals will be gathering... Over on the east side, Turtle Bay, I think it's called. That's going to be on uh, Sunday, the 27th of September, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza, East 47th Street, right by the United Nations, between 1st and 2nd Avenue. I will be there. I'll be glad to greet you. Uh, together we can do something important. It is not clear to us whether there is a any other pro-Putin Demonstration. If there is, of course, we would try to cooperate with them. Uh, 
we can be sure that there'll be a lot of anti-Putin. So we will uh, be uh, asserting uh, free speech and uh, trying to show that not everybody in America is crazy. Not everybody in America has bought into the lunatic State Department line of people like Samantha Power and Victoria Newland and the rest of them, those crackpot lunatic warmongers uh, that have been uh, oppressing us. So we'll have more about that perhaps by the end of the show. But remember, Webster G. Tarpley Twitter, Webster G. Tarpley Twitter, uh, look there. And um, you can also, we, we may be able to get something up on the uh, tarpley.net when we find out uh, exactly any further details. So now uh, we want to say something about the fall of ISIS czar Allen. Well, even before that, uh, one of the things that is going to take place is finally a meeting of Obama and Putin. So dropping the absurd and childish behavior of the State Department, those people, the mad dogs in striped pants, stomping, stomping their feet. There will be an Obama-Putin summit on the edges of that meeting. It should be a well-developed meeting. Victoria Nuland should not be there. Samantha Power should not be there. Um, Kerry, if he goes, should be on his best behavior. He should leave his skull and bones uh, hat at home and uh, be the uh, Secretary of State of the United States. So we got to cultivate that U.S.-Russia bilateral relation, which is the most important in the world. Now, it's clear that there's a lot of pressure coming from Europe. Madame Merkel has said once again that Russia's con contribution to solving the Syrian crisis is indispensable. I'm actually thinking. Merkel said that, and we reported it in our daily briefing, which you can get at tarpley.net. Subscribe for free. Get it in your inbox just about every morning. Merkel had said on the 11th and 12th of September, the contribution of Russia is indispensable. Now she's hit with the Volkswagen scandal. Do we smell a fault? Do we see retaliation in this scandal coming out of the United States and unleashed just as she says that Russia is indispensable? Hey, when Hollande said that the sanctions against Russia had to end back in January, what happened in a couple of days? Charlie Hebdo. Well, we have to keep our eyes open. Obviously, the terrorist training operation, the moderate terrorists, the uh, pro-U.S. terrorists that Allen wanted to train, that is obviously a fiasco. That is a, the world is laughing. The chickens in barnyards, in, in mud hut villages around the world are laughing at uh, Allen, even as he falls. We have General Dempsey of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying that the struggle against ISIS is a stalemate. How can that be? The United States Air Force and U.S. Naval Aviation together have enough power to clobber these, uh, this terrorist rabble. They couldn't stand up for two weeks against a systematic attack. Then there's also the question, close the Turkish border. I'm restraining myself from throwing in some spicy expletives in there. Close the Turkish border. We have a report this week that Turkey may be attempting to develop a nuclear weapon. Won't that be a fine kick in the face for the State Department after all of their brouhaha about Iran and all the inflammatory propaganda? It's going to turn out that Turkey is making strides with seven league boots to get a nuclear weapon. That's the typical treachery you can expect from Erdogan. Why is he still in NATO? Why does he still influence U.S. policy? Of course, his his man, uh, Alan, is no longer with us. So uh, we don't believe that there can really be a military stalemate. That is a stalemate of phony war and appeasement imposed by the Allen faction. And of course, what I mean by that is the Petraeus Allen faction with other people uh, in it. And we're learning more about who's with them and who's against them as time goes on. Lloyd Austin, the CENTCOM commander, not with them. Looks like Breedlove, the NATO commander, is with them. Uh, so it's one of those things, right? Seven days in May, there's a, you know, a pool, the Preakness pool. What's it going to be? Which side are you on? Now, the pressure is uh, growing to lift sanctions. Let's lift sanctions on Syria. 
says half of Europe at this point.